I just want you to know the music was brought in by Niles tonight. And he doesn't just play this around Halloween. Sometimes July 4th, he blares this out the window when the parade's coming by. Um, something to observe in the development of horror is how in American film, the monster is always foreign. That used to be the case. We, for decades, uh, I believe this is what you write, if if we had a monster, if we had a creature in a film, it wasn't American. No, the, the great movie monsters from the Universal Horror films, for example, Dracula, Frankenstein, that's in Europe. That's We're a safe distance away from that. Yeah. And then in the 40s with Val Luton's wonderful uh, RKO pictures, even then the, the nefarious creature is, uh, say, like in Cat People, is a Serbian woman. And... Uh, the Leopard Man takes place in Mexico. I Walked with a Zombie takes place in the Indies, I believe. And uh, the Karloff films like Bedlam take place in London or Isle of the Dead in, in Greece. So it's it's always far away. And, and in the 50s, the alien invaders are a kind of reflective of sort of a, a Cold War anxiety. They're equivalent to the Russians attacking. They are mm -hmm. foreign. They are other. And then something happens in 1960. What happens? Psycho happens. And not only is the monster localized in America, but uh, the monster is a human being. He is us. And uh, we talked about Hitchcock and Psycho before, and what mm -hmm. he does with that movie, which is so extraordinary, is that he makes Anthony Perkins' Norman Bates' subjectivity our subjectivity as film viewers, as voyeurs in this dark theater. And so we, too are then complicit with this monstrosity, with the, the demon within. And we're, we're kind of sympathetic. Yes, we want him to get away with it. In the same way that we wanted Janet Lee, or Lee to get away with her crime of stealing some money at the first part of the movie. Right. Her crime, though, is conscious. It's a sane crime. She, it was a crime born out of free will. His criminality is... Uh, completely impulsive due to his neuroses. He has no free will. He has to do what he does. And that's the beginning of... That, that ushers in the period where uh, the, the horror films happen here on our soil with... with well, uh, there, there, there continue to be foreign of creatures, alien and, and as the... Although you make some point in your... I don't have it highlighted here, but something about an alien where the creature pops out of the stomach... Uh, you kind of make that same analogy about the the the, hor the evil is us. That, yeah, it's it's born within us and yet it's alien to us. That's getting to uh, Freud's point of the uncanny. And I don't want to be too dryly academic about Freud here, but but in 1919, Freud wrote a paper called The Uncanny, where he says that the supernatural in literature, what that is, is equivalent to the supernatural that we experience in dreams. And the feeling is quote unquote the uncanny, something which is very familiar right in front of us, uh, a part of us, and yet is wholly alien from us. And in Alien, which is one of the best horror films of all time, I think, uh, you have that idea of the person being infected, John Hurt, uh, from an alien implant, while at the same time the imagery of that classic scene where the alien bursts from his chest is certainly evocative of human birth and the the alien does kind of have a fetus looking quality yeah, to it yeah well then then jung uh, a student of freud uh, uh takes off and develops this uh, shadow side notion right this, yeah this, the shadow this idea that we have this 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 dark side to us that uh if we repress, if we don't acknowledge, it'll come out in 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 weird ways yeah now a not very good film but one that I loved only because the idea was so good. It just didn't turn out to be a good film. It was a film put out years ago called Impulse. You remember it? Uh, I haven't seen it. Rotten film. One of the worst ever made. But I loved the idea, which was, in this town, due to something in the water, people all of a sudden cannot keep their impulses in check. The little urges they have that we all have, the little fantasies, the things that we think about for a fleeting moment and say, well, we'll never do that. The internal editor comes in and stops yeah. us, uh, doesn't come into play. And so in this town, which is very May Mayberry-like, people start to do exactly what they 
think about doing for just a moment. They, they have nothing to stop themselves. So that shadow reigns supreme. And, uh, but unfortunately, they didn't do enough with that. It was, I thought it was a brilliant idea that just didn't go anywhere. Yeah, so uh, the horror movie is telling us, I think, that we need some kind of repression. Civilization is repression, but it needs we need to be reconciled with the unconscious. I saw a lot of lists today, and I never know what list to trust. But there are so you can Google, you know, best horror films. Right. I saw a lot of lists that had the Thing way up near the top. Uh, is people that... love the Thing, the John Carpenter yeah. remake, and it's a remake. Um, it's one it's one of the remakes which uh, people consider superior to Do the original. You? Yeah. Yeah, I love the thing. Okay, but I didn't uh, see it, and it just didn't interest me. But uh, but I, I've already acknowledged that I'm not interested in a lot of these horror films anyway. I mean, I, I guess I've seen the top, the ones that are at the top of these lists, because when I was younger, I did I did like horror films, or I was willing to see them. I just uh, I don't know. They went they went in. A, I, I I don't know what's going on with the hostels and the you know I don't know what's going on there. Well. Th I, I, I forget. I forget the film director who said this. It was a an old guy from the '40s who uh, said that. Well, we don't believe in eternal judgment anymore. We don't believe in God or the devil, so that means we're free to do whatever we we will. But what still scares us is physical torture and pain. And the in a desensitized world, this genre of what's called torture porn in films like Hostel and Saw. Uh, challenges uh, our corporeal appetites because it's all about identifying with uh, physical dismemberment and pain. You, you know, if I thought stuff like that was never done on this planet, then maybe I'd watch it because I would consider it kind of a fantasy land. Mm -hmm. But, it, you know, if you read about what the Japanese did to the Chinese in 1937 in Nanking, you'll never want to watch a, a show like Hostel, a movie like Hostel, because damn near all of that was done to the Chinese. Yeah, and... Uh, I, whenever I think about say, the German expressionism of the 1920s, uh, films like The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari from 1919, uh, which really was the first, the wellspring of horror movies, uh, I, and most of them were German, I have to think of the counterside to that, which is the, the documentaries of concentration camps, which kind of bookend that. And it's very haunting for me to watch that, because those documentaries are much more frightening than any kind of horror fantasy. Yeah. And th but that's a, a real horror. And it's even, watching Dr. Caligari is even more disarming because the guy who plays the nefarious Dr. Caligari in that movie became a Nazi, which uh, shows this kind of trajectory that Germany will be heading towards. Uh, are we done with our breaks, Flashmaster? Mm -hmm. We're all done with our breaks. Let me look at the time. Oh, my God, we have two have minutes like left. Two minutes left. Yeah. And well, then we die. Can we uh, ask you, as we move toward Halloween, to recommend any film that probably hasn't been seen by people because it's not well known, but it's it's a hidden gem, a diamond in the rough that around Halloween people might want to get a Netflix film or something that would be uh, a good horror film to check out? I tell you, you know, pe people should f fill up their Netflix queues with Val Luton's films from the 1940s. Val Luton took Orson Welles' spot at RKO, and the studio thought that he would just make these generic B-movies like Cat People and I Walked With a Zombie. They gave him the titles before he even had a script. But the movies he made, and there are nine of them, Cat People, uh, I Walked With a Zombie, The Seventh Veal, The Leopard Man, Bedlam, Isle of the Dead, uh, Google them. They're, they're all extraordinary, and they all hit a very dark spot. They they Luton was drawing from his own fears. Spell his last name. L-E-W-T-O-N. And his first name? Val. V-A-L. Okay. But his films from the 40s, I think a lot of people don't uh, have sure any awareness don't of them. I'm sure them. Those are nine movies that definitely you should check out. Very good. Thank you, sir. And happy Halloween. Happy Halloween! News Radio 830 WCCO WCCO HD. Scary Minneapolis and Spooky St. Paul, do your best tonight to sleep well. <laughs>